so we have these uh, group discussions which is uh, a quite normal uh, feature so i want to uh, thank uh, our uh, st dr vinay sasubuddha ji sanjeev sanyal ji rajesh singh ji uh, to discuss uh, this very interesting book this is uh, uh, iconic uh, indians uh, which has uh, just come out and uh, the copy is with us here and uh, the young people who are sitting here it's a uh, i think a compulsory read for uh, all of you so prerna make sure that all your uh, friends uh, uh, read uh, this book i think the i went through this book and uh, he had given me a copy some uh, days ago so uh, one thing i found is that how little we know about ourselves i think that was also probably the That's intention uh, sanjeev ji and uh, uh, rajesh ji wrote this book and uh, of course several names are known but uh, those the names which we did not know or you only had some nodding acquaintance so to bring them uh, to uh, public light i think that is the greatest uh, contribution that is one and i think you have looked at uh, people who have made the difference after uh, 1947 that is the last 70 years i think that itself is a very good criteria that you have chosen uh, for this and uh, i was very happy to see a number of uh, scientists uh, figuring in it very happy to see a number of uh, military personnel uh, figuring in it because these are the real nation builders and there are the people they are there in large numbers and who are also uh, continue to contribute in fact they are the unsung heroes i mean we know so little about our scientists and i think you have brought some uh, uh, people from the scientific uh, world here and then also to uh, of course there are some uh, famous names uh, jawaharlal nehru jrd tata and uh, uh, shyam prasad mukherjee and many others like that but i was uh, really uh, pleased to see that uh, this uh, scientist uh, kanan thunka the one who did on cholera Shambhunar Desh. Yeah, Shambhu. I had not heard of that. Although I'm from science background, but I had not heard of Shambhunar Desh. It was wonderful seeing uh, his name here, and also no. Then also people like Bachindri Pal and R C Bhargav, etc. So I think this uh, uh, about seventy uh, people. You have seventy-five. Seventy-five people from different uh, walks of life. They put together and really how India is being built. They may be seventy-five lakh people, perhaps. you know there's so many people who are doing the work so that's uh, i think many congratulations to both of you for uh, really bringing together a very interesting idea and i was telling uh, uh, rajesh ji that this model we should adopt uh, this model of writing we should adopt for many other uh, uh, in many other areas for instance uh, even uh, we should perhaps the so fantastic books which have been written and which have made a difference in the last say 50 years in by indians about india or maybe about anything else here yeah. so three four pages you tell them so that people start reading about it other idea that i think i discussed with him was you know we talk in history and your subject and you have written about geography and so many other things just the important uh, uh, let's say the edicts famous edicts or some important manuscripts that we bring to the fore and say this is what they talked about india or about indian people etc so people become uh, aware of this so i think it's a very good uh, model etc so i want to thank uh, both of you and of course i'm most grateful to uh, vinay ji uh, who uh, at a short notice uh, agreed to come to this uh, small discussion that we are holding uh, and uh, uh, सर आपका जो आई सी सी आर में इस समय रोल है वी हैव वी रियली ग्रेटली अप्रिशिएटेड एंड एज वी वर डिस्कसिंग आई थिंक आई डोंट कॉल कल्चरल सॉफ्ट पावर एक्चुअली इट इज पावर इट इज इट इज लाइक द मसल एंड बोन यू नो दैट इज वॉट इट इज एंड द वे आई सी सी आर हैज बीन प्लेइंग एंड इज प्लेइंग एंड विल प्ले दैट रोल that has become even more important in uh, today's uh, world particularly when we see in the next 10 20 30 years india is on the rise we need to build so many narratives in every field we have to build narratives 
and culture will strengthen us. Without that, nothing will happen. You can have atom bombs and you can have tanks and you can have everything, all very important, needed. So bones and muscles, I think, uh, and flesh that is required. And of course, we have to package it and give it to them. But most important is in our interactions, we find that people are interested in India's culture. When you tell them something, it doesn't go unnoticed. They may have a view, you know, like you're we talking about Brahmanism, we were talking about, etc. But at least people will take note of it. And I think to build that uh, uh, narrative, culture is very important. But sad part is that we know so little about our culture. So I think, uh, I mean, we have with us, uh, uh, he's, I think, uh, gone back now, uh, Professor uh, D.K. Vichikarvati, Dilip Chaturvati. He is a prominent world-class historian who has taught in Delhi University, and now he is in um, Cambridge University, Professor Emeritus there. He has been writing for us a volume, editing a volume on ancient India history. We have published uh, about eight volumes. 9, 10, and 11 are about to be published in the next few uh, months. He's an archaeologist, and we had a, a, a seminar, and he talked about uh, the state of archaeology in India. So I will tell you, you are both government. He was so disappointed. He was so unhappy, and he was so sad. After 50 years of his work in archaeology, he was saying that there is no sense of nationalism in our discipline of archaeology today. And we have outsourced all our archaeology, important archaeology, and archaeological interpretations, etc., to foreigners. So I think archaeology is the one which will, on which our whole image of India is going to be built. So I think similarly, other disciplines are also there. So these discussions are happening. So we know that how much our rich culture is and how much we know about it. Today, 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 yesterday, the Prime Minister. Lachit Barfukan ki uh, exhibition uh, wo karne ja rahe hai. I was there in the morning. It was a complete eye-opener. Uh, it is not just about Lachit Barfukan, but all the history of Assam is uh, reflected beautifully. Raghavinder Singh, who is now with us, he is the one who has curated the exhibition, etc. But when you go there and you find that you know almost nothing. And the sad part, uh, Bine ji, I asked him, this is two days' exhibition. Today, we will go to the Home Minister, and we will go to the Home Minister, and we will go to the Home it is not even open to the uh, general public. And I asked what will happen to this exhibition. You have made so many posters, so many placards, so many films. This will all go as a kabadi ke bhav. On the other hand, there's so much research that has been done. There must be some way of actually distributing it. Go to, it should be given to schools, colleges, universities, and so many other uh, uh, places. So I have offered to him that whatever you have researched, we will take it from him. Even proper catalog also has not been, because of some government, I think, has done it so. But this exhibition should actually should go all over uh, the country. So similarly, whether it is Andhra Pradesh, whether it is Gujarat, whether it is Himachal Pradesh, so many fantastic resources. So this book, I see it in this book, that you have taken it to इसको जागर किया इनके कंट्रीब्यूशन को और एक जो हमारा एक प्रयास है कि हम एक अपनी कल्चर को सिविलाइजेशन को उसको प्रतिलक्षित करें उसमें एक बहुत बड़ा योगदान आपने किया सो मेनी कंग्रेचुलेशंस टू बोथ ऑफ यू एंड आई थिंक व्हाट विल डू इज आई विल फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट आवर ऑथर्स टू से अ फ्यू वर्ड्स अबाउट द बुक एंड देन आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू काइंडली रैप इट अप एंड मे बी वी कुड डिस्कस some little larger, uh, you know, the issues which are on our mind, we could perhaps discuss that and how VIF can, con you know, collaborate with you and others. So Sanjeev Ji, ko, aap jante hai, he's the principal economic advisor uh, uh, and he has written many books. And I think all your uh, those who study international relations, they should read his books. I think the uh, Ocean in Churn, kya naam tha us ki tab? Ocean of Churn, Ocean of Churn, that is about the Indian Ocean. Uh, that's a fantastic book he has written. Geography ke upar ye inke badi achhi pakad hai, but in so many other things. And we also uh, see him on the television explaining India's uh, economic situation, etc. So we'll have him maybe in that discussion also sometimes. So uh, very grateful to you that uh, you came. And of course, Rajesh ji is associated with VIF in many ways. He's been writing for us for several years now. Some of the, I think, uh, 
the most prolific writer and he has written many books and last uh, two uh, three four years he has uh, taken national security and fictionalized it and he has written the book wiper and the second one kya kya uh, the k conspiracy and now he is getting uh, the church and so on also in a conspiracy writing the third book so fiction novel and putting very well researched uh, you know because i have had some discussions with him on national security तो इनकी किताबें भी पढ़ने लायक हैं बड़े इंटरेस्टिंग वे में कैसे नेशनल सिक्योरिटी में डिसीजन मेकिंग हो सकता है कितने इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यूज और सिचुएशंस uh, बनती हैं बहुत बढ़िया उन्होंने किया अब इन्होंने ये किताब आइकॉनिक इंडियंस लिखी है इनकी एक पहली किताब हिंदुत्व के ऊपर भी इन्होंने लिखी थी बाहुबली इसकी किताब लिखी सो सेवरल बुक्स वी हैव डिस्कस इट सो वेरी हैप्पी दैट रजीश यू आर हियर एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग योर बुक आइकॉनिक इंडियंस सो संजीव जी आपसे शुरू करते हैं प्लीज गिव अस एन आइडिया हाउ यू रोट इट and i think uh, enthuse our youngsters tell them how to write books okay yeah, that's also very important you know give them a so this why i kept it a little short yeah. otherwise badi badi baatein to hum bade bade samajhno mein kar dete hain but these are youngsters very bright people here okay they're all please so thank you very much for hosting us of course and i agree with you with the history books uh, which uh, some of which i do in fact uh, uh, and my next history book is about to come out in about 6 weeks time it's a uh, rewriting india's freedom struggle from the perspective of the revolutionary movement so that will also come out and then there of course we also need to keep the wider culture so including writing fiction which is an important part of storytelling that we need to think about uh, oddly enough this activity of narrative building uh, since independence has ended up being almost dominated by one kind of ideology uh, uh, so sort of some scholar sort of between marxist and nehruvian socialist uh, kind of thing it's very very recently maybe in the last decade or so you are beginning to see a non left literature being coming up now of course there were people like arun shori and so on who used to write but typically they tended to be critics of the other side's literature now this is important to remember that narratives are almost never replaced by criticisms they are replaced by other narratives and so it is important to get other narratives actually written out and so uh, i was very very conscious of this and one of the things that triggered me to write many of these books uh, that you mentioned is just that you need to write the other side of the story some other kind, other lineage of thought has to be put down in paper in various ways by the way even i have written fiction as well satire and so on Now, as far as this particular book is concerned, this is also important. I thought it was important that the story of the country since independence uh, also gets the one thing is to write a book like Ram Chandra Guha is just the history, but to take out some of the characters and sort of throw them around so that you get a sense of who these characters were, so that there is a nat- national memory of what these uh, contributions are at which point in time. Uh, and from a variety of fields so when we chose all these 75 characters uh, we put in a lot of effort into making sure that they they were broadly spread across the region uh, that they were broadly spread across uh, sectors as well because in india as you know everything is dominated by three things politics cricket and bollywood so while they some of those characters are there here there were many important contributions uh, <clears throat> that arvind ji mentioned uh, which came from uh, other sports non cricket sports uh, from the military field from science from uh, industry uh, historian like rc mazumdar uh, or archaeologists like bb lal now unfortunately their contributions are simply wiped out or almost dismissed uh, out of the story uh, by virtue of this capture of one ideology over writing books so i i thought and so did rajesh that it is a good time since this is the 75th year of indian independence let's pick up 75 characters who have made and defined indian uh, india after independence so all the characters here are after independence so you know just because somebody survived past independence doesn't mean they get in the book if their contributions were before independence and what we found is that there are amazing stories and we didn't try to pure, uh, i mean and we have included people from all kinds of ideological points of view jawaharlal nehru and Indira Gandhi are also there in the book, uh, but then what would not have happened if this book had been written with the traditional Nehruvian slash Marxist lineage? 
is that they would have happily left out the likes of uh, Shah Prashant Mukherjee, for example, but also R.C. Mazumdar or a B.B. Lal or people who may not have any ideological contribution. For example, Balbir Singh Dosanjh, he, you know, much forgotten, but in the first decade of India's independence, he was the biggest sports star in this country. He had been instrumental in winning two gold medals in the Olympics. Uh, you know, he was as big as Tendulkar became in the 90s and 2000s or, <clears throat> you know. Uh, so the point I'm making is there are all these great characters whose stories need to be told. And when you get into these stories, there are, it's not just about the little bit that they happen to do as a part of their contribution. There is a wider story, which is also fascinating. So let me give you an example of one of these fascinating characters. One is Mir Sen, who is one of my favorites in the book. He came from a very poor family. Uh, he decided he wanted to be a barrister, so he somehow raised money to get to London, but he had no plans beyond that. He just got enough money just to buy himself with one-way ticket. He lands there, he doesn't have a job, he doesn't know what to do. So he begins, he gets himself a job where he works through the day and he can't attend classes, but he still studies at night using library books. And he passes all his exams and he gets through the barristry, all the exams, and he becomes a barrister. And along the way, somewhere along, he decides, he reads about this uh, English woman who had crossed the channel. Uh, first English woman to have, uh, first woman to have, swam across the English Channel. So he decides that there are no Indians have done this. So he decides that he is going to uh, do it, but he doesn't know how to swim. So he goes to the YMCA and he still spends some point part of every day swimming and he keeps swimming, keeps swimming and over a period of time gets good enough at it that he attempts it and actually succeeds. First Indian to do this. Now, why is this important? Because do remember that this is the 1950s. We've just about become independent. There is still a huge inferiority complex that is there on everybody's shoulders. And for an Indian, particularly given his background, to do this is a very, very, very big deal. And he, of course, becomes an instant national hero. And then that's not the end of it. He comes back to India and he says, you know, one thing to just show the, that Indians can do something the British can. But how about we, I do something beyond that? So he raises the money, and to be fair, the Prime Minister of that time, Indira Gandhi, gives him support. And he then goes and swims, in the same year, he goes and swims the Polk Straits between India and uh, from Dhanush to um, uh, to uh, Sri Lanka. Then he does the entire Panama Canal. Then he does uh, Gallipoli, uh, the Dardanelles, he swims across that. Then he swims across a whole bunch of other places. I think the Suez Canal, a couple of other places also he swims. And he does it all within one calendar year. So the Guinness Book of World Record then records him as the greatest swimmer of all time. So here is a man in the 1950s with literally no background in this whole thing, goes there and puts India in a map in a field, sports other than hockey, we were nowhere. So it truly individual effort to kind of show that Indians can do it. And that would have been good enough for him to be a character of some repute. But he comes back to India and he starts a business. He, by the way, in the middle of all of this, I don't know how he managed to also become a successful lawyer in, in Kolkata High Court anyway. And then he also sets up a business. And he becomes, by the late 60s, early 70s, one of the biggest garments exporters in the country. In fact, in some ways, he's the father of India's ready-made garments industry. And then he becomes fabulously rich in by the mid 70s. Now, this man then in 1977 elections happen and um, Jyoti Basu asks him to come and campaign for him and he refuses. So they puts a lot of pressure on him for contributions, etc. So uh, Mihir Sen gets irritated by this and he decides that he's going to fight in, in the election against Jyoti Basu as an independent. And he loses. Doesn't matter. The problem here is that Jyoti Vasu takes it very personally and he does a whole bunch of uh, uh, sort of strikes in all his facilities in and around Kolkata because he, all this, all this was, he had these factories around Kolkata. All of them go into strike for months on end. And in the end, he goes bust, bankrupt. So, so 
having become bankrupt, then another round of elections come. Again, Jyoti Basu says that I'm going to set it all right for you, but you have to campaign for me and contribute so much money for me. He then again re refuses. And so he goes completely bankrupt. He dies in the late 80s, a bankrupt man, completely shattered, and essentially dies penniless in a, uh, you know, uh, in, in a hospital in Kolkata without enough money to even feed his family. And so this is how, sadly, India rewarded uh, one of its greatest sons. So I thought this was an important story to tell. He was a man who really wanted to take India out there and did it in multiple ways on his own, almost. And the politics of the time just shattered, pulled him down because he wouldn't tow the line. And you see that repeatedly. R.C. Mazumdar is another case. Possibly the greatest historian that India has produced by some margin. He was able actually to write more history more freely under British colonial rule than he was able to do after independence. So he was actually made chairman of the official committee to write India's official history of the independence movement. And he, when he began collating the, the material, um, the, the, the complaint was put up to Nehru saying that he was putting together a book which did not, which was uh, giving undue importance to the uh, other branches of uh, uh, the freedom struggle, like the revolutionary movements, uh, the so-called, uh, 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 the, 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 what, what, what was later called extremists inside their, their stream, which is the Lal, Bal, Pal, but I would call them the nationalists in, in there and so on. And so therefore, the sort of the official Nehruvian story of, uh, of that one branch of the Congress parties and their contribution to India's independence was getting diluted. So he, R.C. Mazumdar was removed from, the, uh, from there and the history was written in some other way. But very importantly, after that, he was just removed from the curriculums and everything. So today, uh, other than the, I think, Bhartiya Vidya Bhavan, who still publishes his uh, books, uh, his books are actually not systematically stock taught even in our uh, history departments across the country. A few may be doing it. Uh, it's almost in, almost in their personal sort of efforts of a few professors. But generally speaking, he was wiped out of our memory, even though he... He, you know, the historian was also wiped out of history. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is that it is important to remember these people, their stories. Otherwise, nobody will remember that such people even existed. And, and the next generation, and this book is really oriented towards the next generation, those who are below 30 who may not even know some of these names. Yeah, so let me hand that back. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think... Uh... Uh, you explained the rationale extremely well, now, Rajeshji. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Uh, yesterday, Sanjeev and I were at one of the most reputed colleges of Delhi University, and uh, uh, some of the students asked us whether the space for uh, free thinking or free writing has been shrinking over the last eight years, eight to ten years. So I told them that the space on the contrary has expanded. Now, when we talk about a shrinking space, we should really be talking about what used to happen the last, before the decade that has gone by. We had a particular narrative and that narrative occupied more or less the entire space. There were other alternative narratives as uh, Dr. Gupta also hinted, uh, but they either did not find the space or they were not given the credit that they deserve. Now, offhand, I can think of several names. Uh, when we talk of history, for example, there have been people who have done excellent work. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, what's happened is that their work was neither uh, recognized. On the contrary, those works were trivialized and the people who wrote those things were marginalized as fanatics or fringe elements etc etc uh, i can think of one name straight away and that is uh, sitaram goel for example right there were foreigners too who were writing and even they were branded communal for example so we've had all of these 
uh, instances in the past. Now, what has happened now over the last few years is that the space for alternative perspectives, not criticism, like uh, uh, Sanjeev correctly pointed out, alternative perspectives, alternative arguments, alternative narrations, the space for them has suddenly evolved. And that space is being filled by these elements who were either ignored in the past or were not taken seriously. So therefore, the space actually has become democratized today. And that is probably, that has given uh, some sort of a competition to those who had a monopoly of that space. And so that competition has maybe unnerved them and given rise to the arguments and criticisms that we face uh, today. So that is uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, emphasize on. Now, <clears throat> coming to this book, like Sanjeev has already pointed out, he's talked about the methodology by which we chose these people. And uh, he's also spoken about uh, Mihir Sin. Now, like he said, there are several such examples. And uh, one of the purposes of the book it's also to interest the younger readers, not just in names uh, of all these achievers uh, who have been less heard of, even lesser read of, uh, but also to uh, underline the fact of the, their contribution to enlarging the cultural and, you know, the civilizational uh, man matters of our country. I'll give you just one example. Let's take Anand Pai. Okay, now very few people, yesterday we were in the same college and we asked the question, not a single student had heard of Anand Pai. Then I asked them about Amar Chitra Katha. Same blank faces. Now, I, 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 must, I should have been a bit surprised and I was, but then imagine the surprise of Anand Pai himself when as a youngster, he watched a quiz program on Doodarshan. Now, Doodarshan in those days was the only TV channel and the quiz program was for youngsters. So all sorts of questions were asked about Greek mythology, Greek history, ancient Egypt, you know, tombs and pyramids and everything else. And the students were answering those questions quite uh, effectively and fluently. Then the question came, can, uh, what was the name of Lord Ram's mother? Nobody knew. And all were Indians. They knew about Egypt, they knew about Greece, they knew about Rome, they knew everything. They did not know about the Indian uh, culture, civilization, uh, general knowledge, whatever you can call it. That was the trigger. That was the trigger for Anand Pai to start thinking, how do I interest these youngsters into learning about our own culture about our own history. And obviously the thought struck him that the best way to do is to have a series of comic strips, which he named as Amar Chitra Kasa. And that was a brilliant idea because one, his target audience were children. And two, the comic industry was already flourishing in India. But then the, the Indian children had to had problems relating with those comic characters and Phantom, Tarzan, Mandrake, and then later on also, of course, uh, the others that uh, that came into the picture. So, so there was a market for for Indian comics, and he decided to tag that. Now that that should have been, but that that is where the problems for him began. He, he created a blueprint. He took it around. He went to a number of leading newspapers, publishing houses everyone rejected him. They said it will not work. Who is interested in Indian, uh, in Mahabharata or Ramayana or Kaushalya or anybody else? So, so he was devastated. But he continued to work on the project, going around. Finally, one of the publishing houses, a distribution house actually, not a publishing house, a distribution house which distributed books published by other publishers, uh, got interested. And that is how the first uh, copy of Amar Chitra Katha came into being. And then from there on, 
we all know how big a success. Um, uh, this was uh, uh, in the 80s, earlier than that, in fact, earlier than that, in fact. Yes. Uh, and uh, and it is uh, basically that's when the when it exploded. Yes. That, yeah, that's how he started. But then 80s was really the time when he when the whole thing really took off. And from there on, there was no stopping Amarjit Kata. Of course, uh, the, the organization faced many problems later on. There were financial problems. The, the series had to be discontinued for a while, and then it was revived. But he went on and on. And today, Amarjit Kata is, is now part of the Indian literature. And in fact, today, also Anand Pai, or Uncle Pai, which is what he came to be known, uh, to millions of Indians, uh, youngsters in this country, uh, we can say that he he truly he is a pioneer of the Indian comic industry. But then for him, the comic industry, the comic book industry was not just a business venture. And that's where we, uh, I come back to where we started that this whole interest in, in Indian culture, Indian civilization, Indian stories, Panchatantra started doing it later on. So all of that ha started happening. So that was one remarkable story, um, a man and his mission, which made this possible. So there are some, several others, of course. You uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Sir uh, Shambhunath Deh. Uh, there are others, Bachendri Pal, of course. Uh, many people know Bachendri Pal, but uh, Shambhunath Deh, nobody knows. Also, this person, Anand Pai, is very not as much known as he should be by these in the sun. You mentioned all these names. So there are a lot of people like that. And uh, some others who are, I, I don't know, today's uh, youngsters may not even remember uh, who Rakesh Sharma was, modern leader Rakesh Sharma. So uh, there are names like that in, in, in the list. And we do hope that, uh, as uh, you pointed out, that when you read this book, you read about them, you get to know a lot more about the contributions of uh, Indians in, in, in such enormous ways that we have somehow failed to not adequately recognize and worse, to forget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned uh, Rakesh Sharma. He's the one I, who, whom I knew personally at that point of time when he landed in Moscow. I was posted there at that time. And uh, the two came here, Rakesh Ramaji and Ravish, uh, wing commander. Ravish was senior, Rakesh was the squadron leader at that time. A very handsome, very fine, uh, you know, uh, gentleman. And we as youngsters used to meet them. They used to come to our houses, we used to meet them several parties and so on. And, and the Soviets also were fawning upon them. You know. They also were given. So they were taken, uh, I think there's about 80, 90 kilometers, there's Star City. That's where the training of these cosmonauts, etc., takes place. So we used to meet these people. So we used to wonder, you know, who will be selected? Will it be Ravish? Will it be Rakesh? And both were excellent. I mean, one better than the other. Ravish was a little senior, perhaps. And uh, yeah, I. And then, if I remember correctly. The details I may be a little hazy. He suffered, the Rakesh suffered a personal tragedy in the family life. Probably his daughter or somebody died. She was very young. So this was a big, and this was just literally a few months before uh, they were to go and the selection had to. So he had to deal with that uh, personal uh, trauma. And uh, we used to meet these people, but the way he, you know, the inner strength that came out. I personally feel that probably that was that might have been the tipping point in his favor because he had gone through a very severe test kept and kept going and did it in very dignified way. So that could have been one uh, thing. And the Abne Likha is made that he uh, did yoga. Uh, was yoga. But actually, it was at that time, maybe uh, they introduced, or was it the other way around? I do not know. This, you know, yoga used to have this ideological baggage in the communism, communist thinking, etc. They would not look at this and think, ye usme, ye cheez hai. Or religion beach mein isne jata hai. But they introduced yoga and meditation as a part of the training program. 
and i think that then they not only for these people but for others also so this i remember this uh, story and i was there when uh, this famous conversation uh, took place between him and uh, indira gandhi of course he was the space at that time he was the space at that time but we were on the ground and uh, you following it so I, my old well well i now as just as a minor spectator that's all yeah so i now request uh, vinay sasabuddha ji to kindly say a few words well uh, thank you dr arvind gupta ji and thanks sanjeev and uh, rajesh ji uh, when i went through the book uh, i realized that uh, this is certainly a need of the hour because uh, societies nations culture civilizations everything has one thing in common and that is identity and identity is something uh, which is a part of our consciousness and when we say identity uh, in a way it's a it's a process which uh, passes from one generation to the other and therefore we need to appreciate the the journey from the past through the present to the future and therefore there has to be some kind of continuity and for that as what sanjeev rightly pointed out that you have to be conscious of the contemporary history as well because uh, post independence our history uh, seems to have been not paid due attention to i mean there are very few books which uh, really bring about the true history of the last 75 years for whatever the reasons i mean uh, some reasons are very obvious though but still and therefore uh, this is a brilliant idea to come out with a comprehensive uh, kind of uh, bio sketches of people uh, several of them known but few of them unknown or rather unsung heroes as well uh, it is educative about the modern i mean uh, contemporary heroes of india and especially as i said in the post independence history uh it also reminds us that even in the present day circumstances we can also make things better and also make a difference i mean these are all people who have made some difference and therefore uh, uh, when we were uh, in the student movement we used to say that many a times the middle class thinking is such that people say शिवाजी तो महान थे सावरकर महान थे मगर वो दूसरे के घर में जन्मने चाहिए हमारे घर में कोई जरूरत नहीं है शिवाजी और सावरकर के दैट यूज टू बी दिंकिंग मगर द काइंड ऑफ पर्सनैलिटीज दैट यू हैव चूजन पर रीथिंग दैट वी कैन ऑल्सो ट्राई टू हैव ए शिवाजी और सावरकर इन अवर वेरी ओन फैमिली एंड देर फॉर दैट इज समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट when i was just going through a little more critically and analytically especially when i realized that the title says that who inspired the country i mean you have kind of categorized it and defined why these people of course you have mentioned that there are certain names and it was very difficult for us to not to have them there including bismillah khan and others but then i was just wondering what is inspiration uh, and i am not a student of social science though but still uh, social science in the sense sociology but i believe uh, uh, the inspiration comes of course from some heroism some heroic work some very important contribution of that particular person on the one hand and on the other hand a minimum level of consciousness level of knowledge level of awareness about that person and his work then only perhaps one can say that oh yeah he has motivated us or he has inspired us and if you don't know and in this case about certain names i can say don't know that we don't know so that is the level of our ignorance perhaps and therefore uh, uh, why many of these people have certainly contributed 
few of them still remained uh, away from the public uh, knowledge as such, awareness as such. And therefore, whether they really could be categorized as people who inspired the country, I have a genuine and honest doubt about it. Having said that, uh, I must say, uh, as Arvindji also has pointed out, that uh, several unsung brave hearts you have included and nations required to know about them. And I, I must say that uh, we should be thankful to you for bringing their uh, very important work, their valor, uh, and of course, uh, uh, their bravery to our knowledge, so that it's something very, very important. You have uh, quite a few sports persons here. Uh, while every sports person certainly has his or her own story, and they also have struggled, it must not have been very easy for them. But then, since many of them, uh, I mean, uh, people in that particular sector might be only knowing about them, whether they would really be able to inspire others, I have my sincere doubts about. Uh, Anant Pai, of course, a very important uh, uh, person whom you have included, and I must thank you for that. Uh, I must also commend you for uh, very thoughtfully selected pictures. I mean, most of the pictures are very rare. I haven't come across uh, many pictures which we have uh, used them here, and especially uh, after uh, being a part of the Pradhan Mantri Sangrahale, in one way or the other. That time, uh, several pictures were seen, but pictures over here are certainly very unique, and therefore my compliments to you for that. If I may suggest that, uh, in a way, uh, iconic Indians, since we are celebrating 75 years, you keeping the size of the book confined to 75% is understandable. But I believe when we are talking about uh, Amrut Kaal, perhaps uh, it would be a good idea to add at least 25 more names to this and make it uh, a kind of rich legacy to prepare the nation for Amrut Kaal. And Amrut Kaal, which is uh, 2047. And who could be them? I believe at least uh, 10, 15 names very easily come to my mind because they are the sectors I wonder whether you would like to pay more attention to them. What are they? For example, public administration. This nation has faced a huge deficit on the count of governance for several years. It was only after Prime Minister Modi that some kind of uh, seriousness has now come to the very process of good governance or governance for that matter, or public administration and several reforms are underway. But work of people like, say, Jagmohan, who is very well known, and a little known people, uh, person like Anil Kumar Lakhina, uh, who is known for his Lakhina pattern, he was a collector in Ahmednagar district in uh, Maharashtra, and he introduced a Lakhina pattern. And that was one of the very highly emulated pattern for the management of the district collector. Yeah. And how do you keep the I mean, that time, of course, these were the pre-computer and pre-information technology days. So to, to get a particular document properly stored in a particular place itself was a big task. And therefore, he introduced this, this pattern. And it was uh, quite talked about in those days. In fact, even during Atanji's time, there used to be a program. Uh, Arun Shauriji used to kind of... Uh, coordinate that, and it was people who made the difference, something of that kind of title was there. And apart from Anil Kumar Lakhina, there was another gentleman who was invited, and he was Sharad Zushi. And I believe even his name, perhaps uh, we should not be uh, neglecting his contribution as well. And therefore, uh, from public uh, administration, I would suggest Jack Mohan, and people like Anil Kumar Lakhina, if not Anil Kumar Lakhina, likes of him should be finding some place here in this list. Also, jurist who created a history, like Jagmohan Lansana, due to his rivalry judgment, 
uh, which uh, ensured that Mrs. Gandhi's uh, election was kind of considered invalid. Then uh, you have mentioned if Bismillah Khan, uh, Bhimsen Joshi, well, but the seminal work in so far as Indian classical music is concerned, I believe goes to V.D. Paluskar and S.N. Bhatkhande. Uh, and therefore, that also you may would like to consider when you really think about adding some 25 more names. Also, while you have taken care of uh, Indian cinema, I won't call it Bollywood, and as you know why. So, Indian cinema you have properly covered. But I would suggest, uh, uh, apart from different uh, ideologies uh, uh, that used to kind of influence these spheres of public life as well, yet I believe the contribution of the likes of Ibrahim Al Qazi or uh, Ratan Thiam uh, from Manipur perhaps cannot be ignored. Similarly, about Tijan Bai, I mean, if you take the folk. Uh, art into consideration, then persons like Tijan Bai perhaps could be considered. Also, in so far as public movements are concerned that have shaped uh, post independence India, then it is Prafulla Mahanta uh, because the Assam movement really brought the Northeast uh, to the attention of not just India but perhaps the entire globe, and therefore Prafulla Mahanta. Similarly, insofar as uh, Seva activities are concerned, social work as such, Baba Amte definitely is an icon and uh, his work is also seminal in several ways. Also, I would add to this list M.S. Goldwalker and Bala Sahib Devras for, I mean, Goldwalker for consolidating the organizational work and evolving some kind of a science of organization in his own way and Bala Sahib Devras for uh, expanding uh, the uh, narrative and also making it more inclusive kind of. Certainly, Jai Prakash Narayan, I believe, uh, uh, must find a place in, in a book of this kind. And insofar as economists are concerned, we have Nandekar as well, who oh, perhaps, I mean, you know it better, I need not explain about it. And last but not the least, uh, the architect of the, in a way, the architect, if not entirely and solely, uh, of the Mandir movement, Advani. So, uh, I would suggest that you should give an active thought to include uh, people like uh, the one whom I already have mentioned over here. But one thing before I conclude, I must mention here that uh, what is common to all these people, of course, they are great people, they have contributed hugely uh, and having read that, read them, after having read them, people will certainly draw inspiration, get motivated beyond doubt. But more importantly, we can look at all these people rising above the considerations of language, region, religion and the most dreadful divider, which is the caste. And therefore, this is very, very critical. I remember a poem by uh, V.V. Shirvadkar or Kusum Adraj in, in Marathi uh, and it loosely could be translated like this, that four statues of four great men uh, in the thick of dark night came together and they were the statues of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Mahatma Phule, Ambedkar, and Mahatma Gandhi. And they were saying that uh, Shivaji said, Shivaji Maharaj said that I'm really, uh, I mean, it is very painful to be mentioned as Maratha icon or Maratha king. Mahatma Phule said that at least Marathas are in good number, but they have made me a Mari king. Mari is a community in Maharashtra, uh, gardeners basically. So they made me a Mari uh, leader. Ambedkar said, and you know who am I? I am considered as a Dalit icon. And therefore, beyond a particular section, nobody is with me. And lastly, it was Mahatma Gandhi. He said, perhaps all of you are more fortunate 
when they put me on the wall, except the white wall, nothing is behind me. <laughs> so I think uh, the icons that you have told us about certainly could be understood uh, because of uh, the fact that they rise above all these uh, dividing lines. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there are a number of fantastic uh, suggestions uh, for you. I mean, your uh, second uh, project should... When Vinayji suggested that uh, this could be expanded to 100, my heart sang a bit. <laughs> so then he said that addition. Uh, but this, sir, the suggestions that you made were great. And uh, some of the names, yes, we, we actually debated them. Uh, classic Arwani Ji ka or uh, Guru, Guru Gurwalkar ka bhi humne debate kiya tha. And also the classical. When we included MS Subhulakshmi, the thought came to us ki ek, uh, we should have this Hindustani classical and we don't have uh, barring Begum Akhtar. And that too, you know, just one format that is. So we thought of uh, Pandit Bhinsen Joshi, Pandit Jasrat, Ustad, uh, yes, yes, and for some, we, uh. there are a couple of issues we had. One is that we had to be fair across regions. So, for example, Northeast. So, uh, so SD Marwan immediately will get priority over some of these other names because, you know, he comes from Tripura. There's no other way we'll get somebody from Tripura if we don't. So, but then one, now that we have him there, he is a man in of a particular kind of music. Now, he's used up the space of male musician already. So now, we cannot, you cannot have Paluskar Ji, you see? Because now I am, because I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, no, I'm doing also a trade-off to another sector. Because, uh, you know, if I uh, add somebody one more music, that means I have to reduce science. So, you see, though, we were making these apples and oranges trade-offs, which are in some ways impossible things. I mean, they're at some level arbitrary. <laughs> but so so some of the names we did uh, sort of have to end up doing this name for example we did discuss wait, 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 wait. a lot of them unfortunately but you're absolutely right that these are also icons, icons. they have uh, impacted the country over generations they that's why and they inspired them. yeah plus the another one that we had to do was we had to make sure that there was adequate uh, representation over time as well so that's another dimension. So you couldn't have too many people of our own time or of the beginning or something. So, for example, and, and we get it, so for example, uh, Cyrus Punawal. Now, supposing two years back, if I had been writing this book, I may not have included Cyrus Punawal. But now, having gone through COVID, he, is, he was obviously an extremely important part of our own times as well. So Cyrus Punawal got included here where in an earlier, two just two years ago, we have not or for that matter, Neera Chopra, who knew Neera Chopra? But I mean, now I don't think we can uh, not uh, not have him there. So there were all these rather, some ways, impossible trade-offs we were making. But you know, we got if, even if we did hundred, we would still be making similar trade-offs. <laughs> oh, it only goes to show show that there are many, many more iconic Indians. And of course, the part of this book, obviously, there has to be some selection. But I think it's a great selection. But it only means that you can, if you are writing another uh, volume, then one way to do is perhaps you should have some uh, brainstorming with some youngsters and different groups go around and, and then do a little bit of uh, selection. There. We did, but you see here also there were some problems. Just to give it, do do we take too many of their names? The one part of the reason we are writing this book is to tell them about the names they don't know. You see, so one of the, uh, so there, there is, I mean, we did talk to various people through the course of writing this book, but there was always a trade-off. Should we have too many names that everybody already knows? Uh, huh. So, no, but then if they don't know those names, how will they suggest it? So, you see, so there were all these trade-offs we were making. Just doing it. So, those are the kind of people that... For instance, Mihar Sen, you mentioned. I remember when uh, we were growing in college, etc. We used to read about Mihar Sen. I mean, it was he was part of our news, and it is usually part of the UPSC exam. Tapi mujhe mal friends ke baare mein. No, like Vidhi Paluskar. You know, now again, he is not somebody who can connect with today's audience, but his contribution. Yeah, 
uh, is undoubted. In fact, whatever Hindustani classical we have today is largely due to his uh, uh, thanks to and also Sir um, Kumar Gandhar. Again, very few people talk about him today. So these are names that are key. Name I would have liked to see here uh, in this very was uh, S. S. Bhatnagar, Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar. Ah. Actually, he is a very underrated. The way he influenced the science and technology policy of India, and of course, CSIR, etc., is known. But he was also an influence on Baba. He was elder to Baba for a few years. And uh, Baba, of course, was very, you know, uh, larger than life kind of a thing, a direct line to Nehru, etc. But uh, he also used to get into difficulty with bureaucracy and so on. And Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar was a person who sorted out, sorted out many problems for him and supported Bhava at, a, at critical junctures. So uh, that, of course, is known only through when you read the letters and exchanges and correspondence, etc. But I think his uh, contribution uh, to Indian science uh, post-independent is uh, great. So maybe you could, and there are some uh, Punjab University uh, some years ago brought out uh, a book also on that. That's yeah. where I read it. Other person was uh, uh, about him. I read in uh, you know the Tribune had uh, done uh, 100 years of Tribune some years ago. Ran Chengappa had he was the editor in Chandigarh that. So they brought out a commemorative volume in which uh, uh, Dhyan Singh, Dhyan Singh's contribution is fantastic. Uh, you know Dhyan Singh College and educationist also for the Tribune itself. He was also a larger than life figure from Punjab, and I think he did a lot of work. But I don't know whether post independence whether you fit into your thing, but some no, Kusto no, Kusto Uska Asar Rahoga, but I'm not very sure because I can't remember all the details. But I was very impressed with the kind of uh, so these are so, so <laughs> let me um, uh, add something slightly beyond the book because I think that would make the conversation. I think there is a case for doing a bunch of books in this genre, yeah. and I actually have two good ideas about it. Uh, and some, if, if you can, if anybody here is has the has the free time to work on it, I'll, I'm happy to take you on for this project as well. I have two books which I have already kind of put to, begun to put together, and I would love some help on this. One of these books is a history of post-independence India, written through what was written at that time about it. So let me explain this through the op-eds and writings of that time. You see, one of the problems of a historian is the following one. See, we can all be very wise because we knew what happened after it. But at the time that something is happening, actually the history can go in multiple directions. So sometimes there is a case for writing an interesting history depend, written using the only the debates of the time and leave untold what happened. So I'll give you one example. Uh, and I'll take it from sports. It is interesting to find out what were all the great commentators and think, right, thinking about the Indian team's prospects for the 1983 World Cup. Okay, we all know we won, so therefore, uh, uh, in some ways that's fine. But the thing is, what were they writing before at that point in time, and what was their analysis afterwards? Similarly, what is the analysis that's happening during the time the 1971 war is happening? Okay, it's all very well we know we won. But during the time that is happening, what are the thoughts that were before the war happens? So there is a project I have slightly done, begun to do some work. But anybody who wants to actually work on this, if uh, VIF is willing to uh, 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 sort of contribute somebody to cause, I, I would be very happy to take them on for this project. Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to thank uh, you know for receiving a copy of the book. This is the benefit of being a discussant. You get a copy of the book. So uh, let me start with a quote from uh, Bhagavad Gita. I mean, if you have to quote, uh, quote with some authority. Uh, Sankhyo Yoga Pritak Balaha Pravadanti Na Palitaha Ekam Apyat Tistas Samyag Ubayor Vindate Phalam. Only the ignorant speak of Sankhya, which means path of knowledge, and Karm Yoga as different. Anyone who properly resorts to even one of them gets the result of both. In essence, uh, learning from the experience of others is as uh, good as creating your own uh, experience. And that is why we as a society pass accumulated knowledge uh, to our future generations. 
in a bit to ensure you know continuum of the culture and also to avoid repeating the mistakes of history now uh, in india uh, we have an established culture of autobiographies and uh, biographies uh, but quality collection of abridged uh, biographies is still limited like i checked uh, you know amazon uh, to see what sort of uh, you know this uh, short biographies or abridged uh, you know uh, version is there very limited very limited and uh, very few uh, you know stand out ones that you would say a book and not exactly you know like being on a guide level now uh, iconic indian uh, brings together two stalwart authors mr sanjeev sanyal and rajesh singh so and in fact in the morning we were discussing like uh, in vif we have uh, you know events uh, every day morning afternoon and there are you know those very few moments where we wait to you know actually meet someone <laughs> and in this case uh, i would say that uh, you know both the authors actually have fans amongst the younger generations uh, sitting here we have read your uh, previous works now uh, you know if you look at it uh, this collaboration i think uh, was going to be successful you know in any manner you're bringing together two very great uh, writers and i after reading it i would say uh, you know it's thoroughly uh, triumphant uh, one knows that you know the genius uh, in writing is not in bringing forth you know ornate vocabulary or increasing the density of the book but it's the simplicity and the uh, compactness uh, of the book that really makes it uh, stand out now uh, the authors have themselves uh, you know detailed their dilemmas in shortlisting uh, personalities for the book uh, india is a very vast country and i think excellence is there in tons so it's going to be a big challenge but they bring uh, together a vast spectrum of pan india icons from the sports to music to military and science in the book uh, every chapter is a vivid story it's very small but it's really vivid and lucid and it takes you back to that time uh making the book a very uh, thorough enjoyable read now in india politicians actors and cricketers have occupied an undue large space uh, you know in our public sphere uh, to be fair if we look at it these fields have the largest uh, media reach and therefore uh, they have very large uh, public appeal uh, but in recent time uh, we have seen conscious efforts to seek new icons and acknowledge people from different fields and backgrounds now uh, the pandemic has proven a uh, fragility of life as we have known it and it has led to a reevaluation of uh, individual as well as societal aspirations uh, the mindset has moved uh, you know from favoring what you would call an archetypal classical hero somebody born with great talent to every man heroes uh, who uh, you know have thorough shortcomings limitations but they bring forth extraordinary fortitude and selflessness uh, to the surface Uh, i would say one example the padma awards in recent time have recognized subterranean non mainstream contributions heartily uh, this was in the case so earlier and this is you know indicative of a renewed dedication to broaden the public space in india with rich diversity of occupations so that you know there is a wider gamut for national ambition now uh, the highlight of uh, you know the book i would say is bringing forth some very unconventional uh, but very notable choices i think all of them have been discussed which uh, i wanted to point out uh, from mihir sen uh, the uh, swimmer to satish dhawan who was the longest serving chairman of isro uh, sabuna de whose medical contribution to cholera in fact it was recognized outside rather than uh, you know in india and he remained you can say unknown uh, until his death a uh, baby lal who presented uh, you know concrete archaeological evidence on existence of ayodhya uh, rakesh sharma uh, director says already pointed out and his story did not end with uh, you know being the first indian in space he became the chief test pilot in uh, hindustan aeronautics limited uh, now if one had to push the authors uh, for a second uh, iteration one would request for a collection of uh, you know indian stem luminaries uh though in recent years uh, we have seen un you know unprecedented reform momentum uh, especially with the new education policy there is a gaping need to reinvigorate the scientific spirit that in, is inherent in indian uh, tradition uh, that would start with popularizing the recognition i i came again popularizing the recognition of indian stem success uh, dating back from ancient time to current day with unwarranted you know quantification that happens many a times 
Now I have other requests also, but maybe for another time. So if I had to say for a second, uh, you know, version of the book, I would say STEM, uh, because India, you know, amongst all the great civilizations, we've had a very strong scientific, uh, you know, tradition, but we've lost it out. And that spirit needs to be revived. And, you know, it's success begets success. If you feel, you know, you are going to do well, you will do well. If you feel that, you know, this is not in our capacity, uh, you will lose out on that uh, momentum. Lastly, uh, I would like to share a personal anecdote. Now, I studied history at the graduate level. I'm from Jesus and Mary College, which is just down the road. Now, there was nothing wrong with my college, nothing wrong with even my professors. Uh, like today, when I look back, I would say it wasn't a teaching problem, but it was a very big textbook problem. Uh, I'm going to be blunt about it. Romla Thapar's Early India is the worst possible choice as a textbook on uh, ancient India. Uh, Dean Jha's book was no better, except it was thinner, but it, it wasn't better. And uh, coming to modern India, history of modern India uh, by Bipin Chandra, I'm not even going to get into it. But after those three years, you know, as somebody who spent three years studying, you know, history honors, I did not come up with a sense of national pride for my own country or my own culture. In fact, uh, many of the, uh, you know, iconic figures like Maharana Ranjit Singh until uh, RMP sir, uh, who was at the VIF, wrote a book. I did not even know about his existence. Uh, you know, this is as bad as uh, doing a bachelor's in uh, history honors in India. Now, uh, history, uh, thus I would say, is not a subject, but is the soul of a nation passed through education from generation to generation. Uh, on that aspect, uh, I would say the authors have made a very due uh, contribution. Uh, lastly, I hope, uh, you know, the authors and the publisher can further commercialize uh, the book, uh, maybe through some, uh, you know, television episodes of narration or quiz cards or even an app. Like I noticed there are apps on, you know, famous Indian personalities uh, because, you know, the painstaking effort uh, that went into condensing uh, such a vast material it needs to be channelized further. So I'll end on that note. Thank you very much. Excellent uh, comments, uh, Prerna, there. Let me have some more comments. Uh, shall we? Or to say something? So it's an excellent discussion and the idea of uh, recognizing the 75 iconic Indians uh, and their contribution in our everyday life. I would love to give a read to this book and uh, thank you so much. And I would look forward to it. Um, so for me, it's an eye-opening uh, thing. Like I, like uh, like many young people, even I don't know a lot of names. So for me, it'll be an eye-opening read, and I would love to read. And it's been a very 